Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, welcome to my channel, The Incognito Astronomer. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I did a video, um, and I had something come in the mail that uh, I was excited about, so I want to share it with you guys. Um, it's this. This new mount, well, new to me. Um, it's used, but it's new to me. Um, this is an upgrade. Uh, this is a Nexstar SE mount. Uh, this mount was made for a, uh, the C6 and C8 Celestron Schmidt uh, Cast Grain Telescopes. Um, what I'm currently using for my grab and go uh, electronic astronomy um, EAA scope setup is a C5, which is right here. C5 is the smaller brother to those scopes. Um, now, the purpose of this video is to directly compare my old mount that I use for the scope, which is this Nexstar um, GT. This is like uh, the version two of the GTs, a, a mo more modern version, uh, with direct comparison with the Celestron SE for the six and eight inch scopes. Now, the main reason for this is because I wanted one based on the numbers, but until I received this in the mail yesterday, I had no idea actually how big it was like what its weight was. I mean, you kind of know, but when you, you have a mount, you have a tripod, things are unwieldy, um, you're not really sure what uh, is going on. So it's nice to, to have them side by side for a direct comparison. So first off, I'm gonna start with what I've been using, which is the GT mount here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about its capabilities, why I picked it uh, to, for use with the C5. Um, and then I'm going to talk secondly about the Celestron SE mount and why I wanted to upgrade to this. All right, so first off, uh, what caused me to start using this scope uh, to do electronic, electronic astronomy, electronic assisted astronomy, or EAA? Um, the big thing for me is that I've always been interested in astronomy, um, and I've got a 12-inch uh, Mead uh, LX200 scope. Uh, the tripod and the mount for that scope weigh about 125 pounds together. Um, it's pretty unwieldy. Uh, the scope and fork is about 75 pounds and the tripod is 50 pounds by itself. So, you know, it, it's not very portable to say the least. Now, I've owned that scope for about 15 years. Um, I bought it right around, well, maybe not 15, 12. Okay. Um, I bought it around 2010, um, and well, 12 years ago I was a little younger and uh, was more able to, let's just say, deal with the hassle of moving it around. Um, about, oh, I'd say last fall I went to set it up in my backyard, and my back um, didn't like me for a few days. So at that point I said, well, I'm a, let's do something smaller um, because I wanted to start looking at the stars again and um, got something smaller. Uh, I found this C5 um, on eBay, got a bargain on that. One of the things that I do is I search for deals. Um, got a bargain on the C5. Um, I do my research, but I also look for deals. So um, everything I have here is not new. Um, now, if you've got an unlimited budget, more power to you. They still sell all of these things, but you can, uh, you know, they're very similar uh, capabilities to what I'm going to be showing you here. So the C5. C5 optical tube weighs six pounds. Now, for a mount, you don't want to go over what the capacity of the mount is. If you get too heavy on a mount, uh, the mount, if it gets, if it gets knocked, it'll shake and shimmy which will set off your images to where they'll be blurry. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see them very well. If you have a lot of wind blowing, that can also cause the shakes in the eyepiece or the camera of a scope. So you want the mount to be able to handle whatever it is you're putting on it, okay? Um, so a six pound scope, I said, all right, what mounts are out there that are go-to um, so I can see objects that can handle a six pound mount? Now on the used market, pretty much the only ones you're gonna find, especially on a budget, are going to be Nexstar mounts like this. Okay, this is a Nexstar GT, like I said. 
This mount, the head and the tripod, the head is the top part here, head weighs five pounds, tripod weighs five pounds. Now that's according to Celestron. So together, this whole thing only weighs 10 pounds. It's extremely light. It's also pretty small. I mean, my hand covers up this headpiece here. Um, it has a weight capacity of eight pounds. So it can handle a scope that weighs up to eight pounds. So scope and accessories, everything that's loaded onto this is not supposed to go over eight pounds. The closer you get to that top end weight, the harder the mount is going to have to work. There's motors inside here and inside the base that have to work. And if you try to overload them, they could slip. Um, you could do damage to them, uh, overwork them. You could burn them out. Things that can happen. Okay, and that's what you want to avoid. You don't want to overload the mount that you've got. C5 is very compact, so it doesn't have a lot of inertia um, or a top heavy end. Like you're not asking a whole lot of the mount to do. It's just basically going to be a weight that sits right about here in the middle. And I said, okay, it can probably handle that. And it has done an excellent job so far. Um, it has go tos. Uh, the Selectron Nexstar, the hand controller that came with this one, is a Nexstar Plus which is the newest hand controller Celestron has. Um, this is the same hand controller this mount has. This mount has all the same capabilities that this one does as far as finding objects, um, hooking into a computer, being computer controlled. It can be computer controlled with the same Celestron software as any of the other Celestron mounts. It's a really nice little mount. I'm probably not gonna get rid of it because I do have other scopes that I could use for it or if I wanted to, I could still bring it out for super portability with the C5. So I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, one of the things about this uh, version is it's got a dovetail here. Um, now one of the things about this dovetail that's not as good, if you notice, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this pin just has a single pin. There's no plate here that pushes down. So this pin can put marks into any of the dovetails that you want to put in here. But the good thing about having a dovetail mount is you can mount any telescope with a with a compatible dovetail. So this is a uh, this is the kind of dovetail that it will that it will use. Okay, uh, CG5 type dovetail. Um, they make these in all sizes, lengths. Um, you know the widths is going to be a standard thing. But this dovetail, any scope that has this kind of dovetail, you can put on here as long as it weighs less than eight pounds, and the mount should be able to handle it which is why they use these mounts for a variety of telescopes. Um, but none of them are all that large. There's a few that are really on the edge as far as what you should be putting on here. But, you know, that's, that's the way Celestron's doing their thing. They push these to the limits as far as what they sell them. Um, it plugs in with a power cord here. Uh, the hand controller plugs in on the side. It also has a power plug that's on the side. There is no on and off switch. It's very, very simple. You just plug it in, power goes to the hand controller. Um, there's no place to store the hand controller, so I put some Velcro on mine um, so I could stick it to the side of the mount and have it stick just so it was out of the way and easily accessible. You know, Velcro is pretty cheap. So that's the, that's the GT. Now this thing's worked perfectly well. So why did I want to upgrade? Well, I got into EAA, Electronically Assisted Astronomy, and I bought um, a second, spent more money, because uh, that's what this hobby does, spent more money, got a, got a better uh, camera. And in addition to that, I said, well, I might want to have a guide scope. So I went and bought an SV Boney 50 millimeter, whoops, SV Boney 50 millimeter guide scope that I then mounted onto this bracket that's on top of the C5. This C5 is a C5 Plus. It comes with this bracket. I mounted this on here. Now, now I've got a separate scope that I can put a electronic finder or just use it as a better finder scope. Um, but this 50 millimeters finder weighs probably a pound. Well, why didn't you just use the finder scope that came with it? Somebody might ask. Well, that finder scope mounts right here. Okay, see these two uh, screws. The old finder scope mounted here. Now let me show you something. The way this is set up, the scope goes in this way. 
If you notice, that means the finder is down here. So the finder, when I have this in the dovetail, the finder was mounted underneath the body of the scope because these are set up kind of reversed from how all the other mounts are set up. So the finders are on the downside of the scope. It was very inconvenient. I took it off, couldn't use it. Um, I was, it was awful. So I just took it off, found this, put it on there. Okay, that's some extra weight. So now we're pushing probably seven plus pounds, which to me is dangerously close to the upper end of the mount. Now you'll hear um, astrophotography people talk about you don't want to overload the mount. Um, you only want to use about half of its rated capacity at any particular time. You know, that's all well and good. EAA is not astro, it's astrophotography light. You can get away with a alt as mount like this, not an equatorial. Um, you can take some pretty good pictures because the software out there does some amazing things. Um, so I said, okay, this whole system starting to get a little bit big. Now I'd always eye in the back of my mind wanting an SE. Um, SEs, this uh, cost a little bit more money than this did, obviously, uh, but it's a lot beefier. This has a weight rating of 12 pounds. So seven pounds, 12 pound rating, easily can handle it. It's made for the C6 and C8. A C8 is a much, much bigger scope than the C5. Um, and a C8 pushes the limits of even this, but that's okay, because I'm not gonna put a C8 on there, although I could if I really wanted to. It does give me that option, which is also nice. I could never put my C, I do have a C8 also, uh, but I could never put a C8 on this. I could on this and use it for visual if I really wanted to. Um, one of the nice things about this mount, um, it's got a 12 pound rating capacity. One of the downsides compared to this is it weighs twice as much. This weighs 20 pounds, still light. I can still easily pick this up and carry it around. I'm not that, um, that weak yet that I can't handle a 20 pound mount. The uh, top weighs um, 11 pounds, the tripod weighs uh, nine. So together that's 20. So this was five and five. This is uh, 11 for the top, nine for the bottom. It is a bit top heavy when you pick it up. Um, it's a lot beefier. In fact, when I received this in the mail, I didn't expect it to be this big. I expected it to be a little smaller uh, than what it turned out to be. I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised, although at the same time, it is pushing weight limits. Instead of carrying 17 pounds outside, now I'm carrying 27. So yeah, I mean, it's an extra 10 pounds, not that big of a deal. It's I can carry this with one hand and open up a door very easily with the scope mounted on it. This, it's not as easy. Um, and you gotta be careful because it is top heavy. And I've already noticed a couple of times just picking it up and carrying it around that it will tip on you unless you wanna keep it stable. All right, but this does have a lot of other things to it that this doesn't have. First off, this has an on off switch. So you plug it in, same type of plug as this, everything's interchangeable, plugs in, it'll turn on, on off switch. It also has this handy side to uh, hook up your mount to, turn it on, there you go. And then when you want, you can just put it back in to the holder, and actually I'll move this around so you can see it. One of the things that uh, this does, it does have another option too. Uh, this, if you want to use batteries to use it in the field, if you don't have uh, 120 volt power, um, you have to have a battery pack with a connector that'll fit into here. The Celestron SE has a battery compartment right in the top. There's batteries that go into this section, okay? Um, and then you can just lock it back down again, okay? It also has an auxiliary port and it also has a guide port. So if I wanted to use a guide scope, there's a guide port already built into this, which is also very handy. Um, now, will I be using a guide scope? Probably not, but it's nice to know the options there if I ever wanted to do that. Uh, one of the other things that's nice about these scopes is with the Celestron software, you can get uh, forks, not forks, geez, you can get um, wedges for these. 
Uh, an equatorial wedge, you can mount it equatorially so that you put a wedge in there and then it'll track much, much better um, than it would previously, um, allowing for much better astrophotography. And it's, it's basically expansion. I have the ability to expand this in the future to where I might want to get a wedge for it if I'm trying to do some long exposure astrophotography and see how well it works. I mean, longer exposure. It's not ever going to be as good as a really expensive mount, but it's definitely going to be an upgrade over what I had before. So the weight capacities, you know, half again more, goes from eight pounds to 12. Um, can easily handle this and any accessories I want to throw on here. Um, even more than, you know, I mean, I could pile all kinds of things on this and it would still, this mount would still handle it just fine. Um, I do like the on off switch. The mount itself, this mount slews up to five degrees a second. This only slews up to three degrees a second. It's a small, subtle difference, but one that's noticeable if you're going around the whole sky, this does do it a little faster. Uh, one of the other things that's also nice about this, the front of this mount, I don't know if you've noticing, see how they're facing each other? That's because the next, this scope, if it mounts in here, is going to mount this way. And remember, there's the finder scope bracket would go here. So I'm mounting it like this. Finder scope's in an accessible position. I might actually mount the finder scope back onto this thing. Um, or I might take this off and find a bracket to mount this up here, just so it's in a slightly better position to be used rather than straight on the side. Because that does put some tension on the mount because you're pushing all this weight out further from the mount itself. Okay. I think that's just about everything I wanted to cover. Um, hopefully it was informative. Oh, one last thing. This dovetail has a bar that applies pressure along the entire, uh, along a surface this wide, rather than one point like this one does. This applies it to a surface that's probably about an inch and a half long, rather than one single point. This is a little bit safer in my opinion. Um, it's going to be way more secure than this would be. So that's something else to keep in mind too. It's just general small upgrades that the mounts have compared to each other. Now again, this is a entry level, extremely inexpensive mount that has a lot more capabilities than people give it credit for. Again, I love this mount, I'm not gonna diss it. This is just an upgrade in pretty much every way. It's beefier, has more things, more capability long term for me as far as what I wanna do. So hopefully, um, this was an informative video for you today. Um, if you liked what you see, please uh, check the little like thing down there. If you want to subscribe, feel free. I actually have some, some subscribers now, so that was really cool. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I can uh, get back with you on that. Again, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.